To begin, my brothers and sisters, we have captured for us in the Quran that even Ibrahim السلام, himself was concerned about the state and the strength and the stability of his faith. Allah Azza wa Jal says to us that Ibrahim السلام, said in dua, invoked Allah saying, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhyi al mawta. Oh my Lord, show me, not convince me, show me a higher level I'm looking for. How you bring life to the dead, how the resurrection takes place. He said to him, don't you believe? Are you not certain? He said, of course I am certain, O oh Allah, but so that I'm asking of this so that my faith, my certainty can be further strengthened. Further reassured, further elevated. Have you ever thought why that's etched in thus for the Quran, etched for us in the Quran until the end of time? It's because this is the mindset of the believer. This is the mindset of a Muslim. They are preoccupied in their thoughts daily with how strong is my faith? Can my faith be stronger? You know, he said, I am certain, and he certainly was truthful in saying he was certain. But he was also scared, concerned, ambitious about greater heights to his faith. Heights perhaps that would render him immune to the whispers of shaitan. Because every single one of us could be subject to our faith faltering at the hands of satanic whispers. Or may Allah forbid our faith being fractured and broken at, under the hammers of hardship at the hands of life, as we say. Because some people, only after those hammers come crashing down, do they realize that I was not as far from the edge as I thought I was. I thought I was more comfortable in my faith than I actually am. And Allah Azza wa said this in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حرف. Among humanity are those who are devoted to God on edge. They're on the verge. They may not recognize they're on the edge, but they are on the edge. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ اطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ If something good comes their way, they're reassured by that. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And if some hardship comes his way, he turns about face, he walks out on his faith and misses out on this world and the next. May Allah forbid. So this ayah here about those whose faith and certainty is actually towing the line of a, of a downward plummet, that's one classification of people. This ayah reminds us that people ultimately are two classes. There's going to be a class that is reassured by their faith regardless of variables, regardless of life situations, regardless of circumstances. They're reassured by their faith. May we be of those people. And there's another class, class of people, those on the edge. Those whose faith is dependent on being reassured. I will only have faith if I'm in a state of comfort and security and reassurance. And between those two classes of people is a world of a difference. Let me say that a little differently. A person will either be actively pursuing, strengthening their faith and bringing it to higher grounds like Ibrahim السلام, was actively doing, or a person will be haunted in their life and potentially their afterlife because they put their guard down with their faith. They let their, themselves be subject to their faith sinking to a point in which they get stuck, in which they are sabotaged, in which they are in the swamps of doubt. You know, uh, true, unwavering faith, yaqeen, certainty, conviction, yaqeen, this is the greatest treasure on earth that you want to pursue. And you know, like all treasures, it is rare. It's hard to find, if you will. The early Muslims used to say, مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ شَيْئًا أَقَلَّ مِنَ الْيَقِينَ Allah never sent down to this earth anything that is more rare than certainty. But by His grace subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His mercy and His generosity and His fairness, 
His gentleness with us, unlike the gold and the silver and the diamonds and the limited resources of this world, those treasures, yaqeen is available to everybody. It's not a limited supply. But it is limited because few are those who work for it. Few are those who live pursuing it. Few are those who appreciate it as it deserves to be appreciated. And if we are to add one more layer to this, our Prophet ﷺ actually told us that those few will be even fewer as we near the Day of Judgment. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Salahu awwali hadhi al-umma fi al-zuhdi wal-yaqeen wa fasadu akhiriha fi al-bukhli wal-amal. It is reported that he said, the strength in the earlier phases of my ummah will be because of their zuhd. Zuhd is sort of to not be clingy to this world, to not be obsessed with the material world, to be disinterested in, in this dunya. Zuhd and yaqeen and certainty. And these are obviously related. It is because of your certainty, you're able to ease off. You're not dependent on this world, right? He said, and the weakness that will occur, doesn't have to be everyone, but the weakness that will become prevalent in the later phases of my ummah will be because of bukhl, stinginess, and amal, false hopes. And those two are also related. You have this like wishful thinking about life potentially being able to satisfy us, paradise on earth. We may not say it, but we may actually operate on that basis. It can be attained, right? Happiness, uh, because of those faulty wishes, you will have stinginess. You don't exert the time. You don't exert the effort. You don't exert the money. You don't devote yourself to get that yaqeen. And so it is that wishful thinking, which is the absence of certainty, that causes them to withhold. And likewise, the presence of certainty that allows them to sacrifice. And so this is a little bit of an uncomfortable diagnosis, an uncomfortable truth. Whenever there is falter, or lag, or weakness in a religious commitment, it's not always because someone happens to not know. The honest, bare truth is, this reflects more often than not a weakness in yaqeen. Because if you believe more, you do more. If you're more sure, you operate upon, about what you're sure on. And that's why Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, he used to say to the people, if certainty takes its proper seat in the hearts, the hearts take off. They fly towards Jannah. They fly. They have a fervent away from the fire. And you know in, in the verse that we discussed weeks prior about Salah and Islam actually making life easier, life's hard without Islam, what else did we say? We said that Allah Azza wa Jal told us Salah is a burden, right? Weak commitment. Salah is a burden except for who? الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُ رَبِّهِمْ Those who are certain. So that Qur'anic principle should always reverberate in our minds whenever we find weakness in our commitments. That there's a correlation always between commitment and conviction. Between sort of our sacrifice and our easing off of the comforts of this world and our certainty in the promise of Allah and the next world, the hereafter. Without certainty, you'll never pull it off. I'll never pull it off. You know, Al-Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah has a beautiful statement. He says, Paradise was never sought except through yaqeen. It's only because you're certain that there's a paradise. And the hellfire was never fled from except because of yaqeen, certainty. He said, وَمَا نُوِيَتِ الْفَرَائِضُ إِلَّا بِالْيَقِينَ You don't even make the right intentions for any of your obligations. So do them and do them for the right reason except because you have yaqeen. He said, وَمَا صُبِرَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ إِلَّا بِالْيَقِينَ And no one is able to endure the truth, meaning to stay principled even when it's inconvenient, except because of yaqeen. You're not going to be able to have any of this. And then this fifth most beautiful statement, he says, وَإِنَّ فِي الْعَافِيَةِ لَخَيْرٌ كَثِيرٌ And you know, it's such a favor from Allah that He spares us of trials. That's another benefit of yaqeen, is that it helps you in trials. But he's saying, I've realized in life that it's such a blessing that Allah not test you. He said, because I have seen everyone, they measure up, they're pretty much the same. Everyone's the same in times of ease. He says, but then the trials came down and everyone separated. Meaning, when the trials come, 
those who survive them are only those who have yaqeen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he echoed this sentiment. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma said that in nearly every gathering, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not rise from it without making a certain dua. A part of that dua is what? وَمِنَ الْيَقِينِ مَا تُهَوِّنُ بِهِ عَلَيْنَا مَصَائِبَ الدُّنْيَا O oh Allah, grant us enough of a share of yaqeen, of certainty that would effectively lighten for us the calamities, the brunt, the impact, the pain of what this world brings. You know, when you're certain, it's not the end of the world to upset somebody, right? It's not a huge, irresolvable problem. When there is some loss, you are not confined to, to material explanations to why this had to happen. You have a bigger perspective. You're liberated from that mindset. You're not stuck also in conflict because you're not blaming others too much for things that ultimately Allah also permitted, subhanahu wa ta'ala, or else even those others would not have been enabled to do it. You don't measure things on the outside anymore. Like those who don't have faith, Allah Azza wa Jal says about them in the Quran, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا All they know is the outer nature, the apparent, the exterior shell of this world. But the people of certainty, may we be of them. They, they see this transient world as an opportunity for the hereafter. The pain here as a reason for pleasure there. I will be elevated for my patience. I'll be cleansed by these ordeals. And through that, they're able to be content. And finally, before I sit down, brothers and sisters, the most fundamental, most uh, important reason why yaqeen needs to be a continuous, lifelong pursuit. I have to have unshakable faith. I have to continue building and have this unbreakable faith is because not a single good deed is accepted from a person who doesn't have yaqeen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to us in the authentic hadith, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. The kalima that you know, no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. He said, La yalqa Allaha bihima abdun ghayra shakin fihima illa dakhala al jannah. Nobody will meet Allah with those two statements. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah without doubting them except that they will enter paradise. Without doubting them. And to this point, Bilal ibn Sa'ad, rahimahullah, great, great early scholar, he used to say to his students, Ya ibad ar-Rahman, O servants of the Most Gracious, know that you are working these short days for truly long days, meaning in the hereafter, and in this perishing world for a permanent world, and in this realm of grief, an exhaustion for a realm of bliss and immortality, everlasting life. But, he used to tell them, whoever will not act with certainty in that, let them not trouble themselves. It will not show up on the other side, unless you are certain in the other side. And in fact, Abu Dhar radiallahu an, he used to say, the great companion, that Allah will not just reward you for your yaqeen, he will reward you proportionately to your yaqeen. In other words, you may perform less acts on the exterior sense, physical acts, but because you have greater certainty in your heart, your rewards would be multiplied more than another person. So that is the truest factor. That is the most consequential, the most important of your investments in your faith is in the very bedrock of it. May Allah make us all people of conviction and certainty. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim ali wa lakum. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله. So brothers and sisters, if we are concerned about our certainty, like Ibrahim عليه السلام was, from there where do you go? I want to give you three very straightforward, very practical methods to climbing that staircase of certainty and building it further, taking it to safer heights. The first of them is to study Islam. So you get a chance to experience the truth of this faith firsthand, not secondhand. 
You, you experience the moral, the intellectual greatness. You experience the sweetness of faith yourself. You know when Allah Azza wa was telling you, hold on in the Quran, He said, فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ الْمُبِينَ Put your trust in Allah. Why? The verse continues to say, because you are upon the clear truth. Is it clear to you that it's truth? You know, I, I believe firmly, brothers and sisters, that we need to know more about Islam and what makes Islam exceptional in this day and age than any age prior. Right or wrong? But the early Muslims even knew this in a, in a sort of a Muslim Islamic dominant atmosphere. Khalid ibn Ma'dan, rahimahullah, he used to tell the people, تَعَلَّمُوا الْيَقِينَ كَمَا تَعَلَّمُوا الْقُرْآنَ فَإِنِّي أَتَعَلَّمُوا you need to learn how to have certainty. Study it, explore it, prove it to yourself. The same way you study Quran, because even I study it, meaning nobody is above learning and relearning this subject because it does wither away, it does get eroded. And you know, Jundab, the companion of the Prophet wasallam, he says that we were taught Iman before we were taught Qur'an, and that is why the Qur'an increased us in Iman, in faith. But you need to know faith first. Like, why is this book important? Why is it special? Why do I believe it's from Allah? Then study it now. That will be a transformative experience. And Ibn Mas'ud, another companion of the Prophet he said something very similar. He said, and later on, people are going to flip the formula. People are going to mess up. And they're going to start memorizing the Qur'an and not being able to act upon it. They will find memorization easy and acting hard. Why? Because there is not enough focus on the faith, the foundation, the bedrock. And we know in the authentic hadith of the questioning in the grave, may Allah ease it for all of us. That the angels sit the man up and they ask him, who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who is this man, Muhammad? الموقن, the hadith says, the believer that is certain, he answers correctly and he is told, rest in comfort, for you were upon certainty. We confirm, we vouch for you. We verify that you are a person of certainty. Then they ask the other person that is a munafiq, a hypocrite. The other wording says, المرتاب, the doubter. Absence of certainty, inadequate certainty. And then he will say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And he will be told, Ma darayta wa la talayt. You don't know. And you didn't go find someone who knows. You just took it easy. You think that will be accepted of you. So this is the first one. The second one, studying Islam, the second one is to avoid the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to know that every act of disobeying Allah causes spiritual damage to your heart. And since the heart is the organ, right? Or the locus, the place through which you experience your faith. Like how do you experience Allah Azza wa Jal? Like not theoretical knowledge. On an experiential level, this is through the heart. It's not an exercise of sort of the brain. And so the more you damage this heart, the more you render yourself incapable of recognizing how great he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wounds that you cause to your heart with sinful behavior, with disobedience, bleed and leak out of your heart the glorification of Allah. And that is why you find very clearly in the Qur'an that when Allah is inviting you back to certainty, He invites you back through what? Mending those wounds through repentance and reinstating that glorification through praise. He says, Fasbir, inna wa'ad Allahi haqq, hold on, the promise of Allah is true. Then he says what? Wastaghfir li dhanbik, and seek forgiveness for the sin. Because that's what will, can cause you to waver in Allah's promise being true. Wasabbih bihamdi rabbik, and glorify the praise of your Lord. Reinstate what was lost because of that violation. This is the second. And that is why, uh, Abdul Wahid Az Zahid said, I, I met a, a righteous worshiper on the road once and I stopped him and said to him, give me one word of wisdom. He said, if you want certainty, you need to build between yourself and the temptations that could lead to haram. You need to build for yourself an iron wall. Self-discipline, seriousness. 
Otherwise, you cannot hope to have certainty. The third and final one, my brothers and sisters, we are out of time, is you, you require a environment that is conducive, that is helpful to generating certainty. The same way you cannot subject yourself to people that behave sinfully because you will approve of it and then adopt it yourself secondhand, you also must protect yourself from those who are infected with doubt. Do not socialize unnecessarily. That requires uh, some honesty. Unnecessarily with those who don't believe in Allah. Don't believe in His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't believe in the last day or else for certain the stains will, will run deep. We get this from Allah Azza wa Jal saying, Fasbir in another verse. Fasbir inna wa'ad Allahi haqq. Be patient, persevere. The promise of Allah is true. وَلَا يَسْتَخِفَّنَّكَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُقِنُونَ And be careful not to be dislodged, not to fall off your faith by those who don't have certainty. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us certainty that never breaks, convictions that are unshakable, and grant us life so long as life is good for us. And forgive us whatever can cause a barrier and a veil between us and Him. Allahumma ameen. May Allah grant us and our loved ones yaqeen that will lighten for us the burdens and calamities of this world. And allow our last words from this life to be La ilaha illallah, the statement of certainty. Allahumma ghfir lana warhamna.